Greetings folks, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. This time we have the XL variant of the USS Voyager. So many comments across Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. How are you getting the XL Voyager? Have you reviewed it yet? And uh, thanks to the folks at Eagle Moss, I am now in a position that I can, for full transparency, this product has been gifted to me with no conditions, so my thoughts and opinions are my own. And if you like what you see, there is the standard shop link down below. So do check that out if you want to have more information on pricing and availability as well. But um, hopefully you will enjoy this content and uh, maybe give me some extra insight into uh, your experience with the XL Voyager. So sound off in the comments below. So. We're going to have a look at the model, the main draw for this video, and uh, we'll see what additional content lays inside the magazine as well. So let's check it out. What I will say, this is a freaking long box. <laughs> this is a long box. It's a long ship in its detail size. You know, it's small, nacelled, but um, we have many Voyagers in the collection, uh, variants. But um, I'm curious to get my hands on the XL variant here. Um, we have our mount. So that's gonna be clipping onto the back of the saucer section like that. We have our base. So 2241, I don't know if I get it in the frame properly, 2241 A slash A USS Voyager NCC 74656. So there she is. She sits waiting to be plucked from, ooh, man, that's heavy. <laughs> That's like my constant thing. I'm so used to dealing with the smaller ones. It's like, wow, that is heavy. So, uh, it, mm, okay. I'm just trying to take this all in here. Um, I'm remembering what it was like looking at the original version of the ship. So let's get up close in person with Voyager, shall we? So, do you know what? This ain't half bad, <laughs> to be honest with you. This ain't half bad. Um, there's a little scuff. I don't know if you can make it out in the camera here. You'll see it when I get a little bit more up close. There's a tiny little scuff just over here, but um, we'll check that out a little bit more. But initially, um, this is impressive. There is a fierce weight at the front of the ship. Plastic, like that's, that's die cast all over here. That's all die cast. Die cast here, plastic cap plastic here as well um yeah my eyes are dancing across this model here so yeah let, let's let's get up close and we'll check it out so there's no Aztecing on these models okay um all the detailing is on the the escape pods the windows and so on and so forth as well speaking of windows million miles away it's not even like it, it's it's in the ballpark it's in the neighborhood but they need to be just up a notch so there's quite quite a production drift on that um we know why this happens is there other solutions to it you know more routine recalibration on you know the manufacturer side kind of pisses me off a little bit but you you want to focus on that to for that to really jump out because uh, otherwise it's something that you can kind of easily glance over and um, the escape pods have very clear individual numbering. You have your detailing going around the leading edge uh, in places on the nace, on the phaser bank. You have your detailing along the leading edge of the saucer. And if I can get up close, you can see the detailing just along here as well, which is actually quite nice. Again, the XL variants just give, as I previously said, that kind of enhanced sharpness to the existing detailing on these ships and you have your front port there as well and then you have your auxiliary deflector your rcs units bridge module quite nice and again there's a lot of detail along the back of this ship as well you have your photon torpedo launchers all the way down into the shuttle bay shuttle bay is quite nice in there as well and you have your kind of leading in area 
would have been nice to see the nacelles move, but <laughs> not this practicalities there at price points. Um, would have liked to have seen plastic pieces here, to be honest with you, because that's quite large in comparison to some of the uh, bizarre collectors that we've seen on the regular line that have had plastic inserts as well. Kind of, you know, it, it's just a nice little finish and touch to it. But I like, I always like to have the plastic inserts for the bizarre, the the overall nacelles. There's that paint error on it. Not the worst. It's not the worst. A lot of nice detailing on the venture side as well. Registration and pennants are very crisp. That's impressive. I like that. Window misalignment is consistent throughout. Unfortunately. Nice crisp paint on the deflectors. And again, nice uh, detailing on here as well. And there's your Aero Shuttle. And then you have your registry as well. So that's pretty good. I like that. Um, oh, I'm pulling my camera to one side here. I do apologize. Um, I'm curious to know what you folks think of it. Um, I am impressed. Um, I must admit, the original Voyager was a little bit of a mixed bag for me because there was, I remember clearly that there was like, there was a, a great definition in the detail on the ventral side, but the um, dorsal side was just very, very soft because again, as I said, there's no aztec on Voyager, but there is a lot of panel lines and that's what brings up and breaks up the surface area on the ship, all the way through the ship, uh, as a matter of fact. And I just remember, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's the case or if it's kind of like, you know, kind of fogged memory. Um, if that will stand out when we compare the two of them. But let's check this ship out um, in its mount, which I'm looking forward to because it's mounting here, uh, which some of the Voyagers do. Uh, the other Voyager mounts at the back as well. So it'll be interesting to see the two of these side by side. There you have her, ladies and gentlemen, the XL Voyager. What do you think? Um, initially, oh, I'm just spotting there's a little bit of a green paint artifact on that side as well. You might catch it on the other way around. So there's a couple of paint blemishes um, on the ship. The initial impressions, it's very nice, um, to be honest with you. Um, the paint detailing is quite nice. Unfortunately, there is quite a noticeable drift in the windows um, versus their mold points, which is unfortunate. And, you know, it's almost kind of consistent the more you move back from the bow of the ship to the stern, it just gets worse. So again, obviously we have production drift on that. The only consistent cure is kind of, you know, more regular potential like calibration on the manufacturing side. But unfortunately, nothing new uh, when it comes to it. But that aside, it, it, it's, I think it's leaps and bounds um, ahead of the standard scale one which is a, it's a generally nice model um i will give it that but um there's just a lot more detail a lot stronger uh, a lot more refined detail and some of the paint apps like when you're looking at the, the registry details here you know the ports on um port and starboard and the bow of the ship the photon torpedo launchers just everything has an extra little bit of refinement to it which is what you would want to see here we have the two Voyagers side by side, so you can get a sense of scale between the two of them as well. They both have a, a decent amount of detailing, but unlike some of the other XLs, there is additional detailing on the XL Voyager, you know, like around these sections here along the leading edge. The panelling, as you will hopefully see in this version, is a lot more, again, defined, a lot more uh, dialed in which is great to see and if even if you look at sections like here where there's a complete absence of detailing versus the XL version um, things like that is, is where it's going to pop out so the ship is quite large <laughs> when you look at the regular version of it and um, as I was saying there you know there there is an absence of detailing on the traditional uh, regular version that um, is completely occupied here uh, on the XL version, excuse me, I do apologize. And um, yeah, it's a real crisp version. I let you be the, the decider on whether it's worth it. 
But um, I'm actually very happy with the XL version of Voyager. Here's some of the kind of, as I said, the soft mold points on the regular version. It's just kind of like it's almost kind of low resolution in comparison to its bigger counterpart as well. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the XL Voyager? Before we end our little chat today, let's check out and see what extra goodies lay inside the magazine. You never know. There could be some nuggets of gold in there. So folks, so folks, here we have the magazine. Uh, Intrepid class launched 2371, length 343 meters, with a total of 15 decks. We have our two sections, creating Star Trek Voyager and making Star Trek Voyager. So, eh, two different things. Um, caretaker first appearance, Intrepid class, endgame, last scene, designed by the generally you know, he, he is a straight up nice guy, uh, Rick Sternbach. And uh, I know I talked about designers being generally nice guys, but they all are. Um, most of the creatives um, are fantastic um, to get uh, to have a chat with. So if you ever see them in a conventions or anything like that, um, I don't think you'd be disappointed. And obviously, captained by Catherine Janeway. So, Into the Unknown, Star Trek Voyager was designed to take a new kind of crew to a strange and unexplored region of space. Um, kind of going back to the original kind of ideology of Star Trek, you know, going where no one has gone before, beyond the frontier to the complete unknown. So we have profiles on the characters, their uh, playground, so to speak. Tom Paris, Blanet Torres, Harry Kim, obviously the Doctor, Neelix and Kez, and the New Direction. So, great to see some concept art in here as well. I like that. That's pretty awesome. Again, almost kind of like a submarine type of thing here as well, which is kind of cool. Um, not sure I ever digged that kind of design, but you know, to each their own. You have to go through these iterations to kind of find your own identity and uh, match the brief of uh, the producers and stuff like that. Again, engineering, again, it's pretty cool actually. And a uh, little bit of a slight play on Voyager here, some slightly different angles and more kind of pronounced pylons and stuff like that as well. So block two revision, 16th of June, 94, 85% nacelles, uh, overwing mounting. Mm, okay, cool. So it looks like there's going to be some nice nuggets of information here as well. Again, a lot of kind of um, windows, uh, which I always like to have the windows on spaceships as well, <laughs> to be honest with you, especially for TV shows. Maybe not a great idea for actual practical uh, spaceships. Um, and here we have Sick Bay as well. So pretty awesome. Um, and then obviously the intro as well. So um, some good information there, in addition to what we would have seen on the regular uh, issue of uh, Star Trek Voyager. So again, sound off in the comments below. What do you think of Eagle Moss's Excel version? Have you got it? Were you happy with what you got? If you don't have it, are you thinking about getting it? Has this video changed your mind? Or are you doubling down saying, no, regular version is fine for me. Um, anyway, we'll call it quits on this video today. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Especially if you're new to the channel, hit that alert bell so you stay up to date with all the current videos and future videos coming out and the playlist is in the description box for the XL line and all the other Eagle Moss lines that I have reviewed as well. So do check them out if you have the time. Your support is greatly appreciated. And um, folks, if you're interested in the model, there will be a link to the Eagle Moss store in the description box as well where you get pricing and availability. And uh, if you're so inclined and you want to support the channel here, uh, help me continue to do what I do and uh, improve the channel, uh, you can support me over on Patreon as well. And uh, big thanks to those who already do. And uh, listen, it just means a lot to me. So <laughs> thanks very much. I'm going to call it there before I start rambling and getting all teary-eyed and emotional on you all. Um, have a good rest of the day. Thanks for stopping by. And I will see you in the next video. So take it easy. Bye-bye.